Hey there everyone, I'm Halo Cannon, and welcome back to Installation Zero Zero. Surprised? Well, as part of a collaboration with Mr. Zero Zero, I've decided to hop over here and talk about the casualties of the Human Covenant War for humanity and where their population stands afterwards. Over on my channel, of course, Installation Zero Zero talks about the casualties on the Covenant side of things, so after this, head on over there and check him out. He's definitely got the more difficult job ahead of him, but for now, let's talk human losses. Strictly speaking, we have a pretty good idea of human losses from the Human Covenant War. In the short story Palace Hotel from the anthology Halo Evolutions, Cortana states that by October 20th, 2552, 23 billion lives had been lost to the Covenant. More would follow as Saren Osman notes in Halo Glasslands, we lost a few billion at Earth. While not a solid number, we can estimate at least an extra 3 billion in losses, bringing our lower end estimate up to 26 billion. Now, before we continue, I need to address the losses at Earth. If you're at all familiar with the Bestiarum included with Halo 3's Limited and Legendary Editions, you'll recall that it stated the post-war population of Earth was 200 million. And we also know that Earth would be back up to a population of around 7.9 billion by 2557. This was all explained by the Halo Twitter account some years ago. Alongside the billions of deaths, Earth was also largely evacuated, resulting in the 200 million population number by the end of the Human Covenant War. After the war ended between evacuees returning and an influx of refugees, the population would quickly shoot back up to 7.9 billion. Now with that out of the way, we need to figure out what the pre-war population of humanity was. That might seem simple at first, I'm sure a few of you have heard the claim that the human population was around 39 billion. If you haven't, take my word, it's commonly touted as fact and I know I've mistakenly done so over the years. In truth, the number comes from a misinterpretation of a statement from Dr. Halsey's journal where she says she needs 39 billion DNA records to accurately screen for her genetic criteria. So the question comes to, is there any source for population pre-war? Yes, but actually no. In the Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn short titled Lecture, General Black refers to there being trillions of humans spread across the galaxy. Generally, this is chalked up to a writing error with every other reference to human population being in the billions. So ultimately, no, we have no solid number, but luckily, we can make some very educated guesses. According to current projections, human population is projected to hit, by some estimates, around 11.2 billion in 2100, up from an estimated 9.8 billion in 2050. In the Halo universe, we know that extraplanetary colonization efforts began in earnest in 2080 with efforts targeting the Moon, Mars, and the Jovian moons. Before anyone asks, we do know that Venus was a candidate for colonization at one point, but those efforts ultimately failed. Anyway, let's estimate around 10.5 billion humans on Earth in 2080. Many would make for the new colonies available to them, but most would stay on Earth. Earth would have a stable population of 10 billion, even 500 years in the future, so we'll estimate that it largely stays the same throughout the next 470-ish years. As for the colonies, it's ultimately impossible to say how much the population would grow due to the new space available to humanity for expansion, but it's far from a safe assumption to assume that populations would suddenly boom due simply to the availability of space. At present, population growth is around 1.07% and has been on a general downward trend. We'll take a bit of a liberty and assume that will continue. Using a population growth calculation, estimating the growth between 2020 and our 10.5 billion projection for 2080, we arrive at an average growth rate of 0.5%. That's average though, and projections from the UN put population growth in 2100 to be around 0.09%. Since we're assuming Earth population will hold steady at around 10 billion for the next 470 years, we'll start with the other 500 million in our estimated population for 2080 and calculate their growth as humanity expands, leading up to 2362 when the first extrasolar colonization efforts would commence. We'll keep our 0.5% average growth rate, hoping this can roughly account for various hardships along the way towards colonization, along with immigration between Earth and colonies, and accounting for the fact that not every effort is going to result in Earth-like colonies. Luna, for example, can never be properly colonized and as such relies on domed habitats scattered across the Moon's surface. Mars, on the other hand, would eventually become as green and blue as Earth, despite certain depictions in Halo media, 
and humanity's primary industrial world and shipyard in the Sol system. That 0.5% growth rate also assumes there will be something of a curved growth rate over time, with a lower growth rate at the start of colonization's efforts, a spike as the colonies were established, and then a decline as living conditions continue to improve, not to mention that growth may be hindered by resource availability, notably food. There would be a time when food sources would have to come entirely from Earth, and that may continue to be the case, such as for industrial and research colonies. So, between 2080 and 2362, we're looking at a population increase of 2.1 billion, totaling humanity at 12.1 billion by 2362. I know many people will see that as low, but I don't think that it's unreasonable given the hardships early colonization efforts would encounter. And you, of course, have the interplanetary wars between 2164 and 2170, which had four years of prior fighting before they even broke out. In 2291, the Shaw Fujikawa Translite Engine, or Slipspace Drive, was unveiled, and on January 1st, 2362, the first wave of extrasolar colonization ships was launched from Luna. Led by the Odyssey, over 100 ships would launch, each with its own destination, each carrying thousands of colonists. The Odyssey would itself found the first extrasolar colony on Reach, and by 2390, less than 30 years later, the inner colonies would be established with 210 colonies. 100 years later, in 2490, humanity would claim over 800 colonies, ranging from fully populated human settlements, to mining and industrial colonies, with minimal or no human presence, to outposts and monitoring stations. During this period known as the Damas Diaspora, the human population burdens would largely stabilize. Now again, it's hard to guess exact growth rates, but looking at some known UNSC colonies, we can get some solid estimated growth rates. It's known that Phoenix-class vessels, such as the Spirit of Fire, could carry around 11,000 colonists and crew, and while not outright confirmed, it's generally demonstrated that a single colony vessel would be used to colonize a planet. This can be demonstrated with the Odyssey being the ship sent to colonize Reach, or the UNSC Skid Bladir, I think I got that horribly wrong, colonizing Harvest. So, for the sake of simplicity, we'll assume that proper colony worlds would generally start with 11,000 colonists and grow from there. And note when I say proper colonies, I'm looking at heavily populated ones, those numbering in the millions. So, forgive the boring list of numbers for a moment, here's a breakdown of colony population growth rates. Reach had a population of over 700 million in 2552, putting it at an average growth rate of 5% over 190 years. Harvest, settled in 2468, had a population of 3 million in 2525, for a growth rate of almost 10% over 57 years. Arcadia was settled in 2429 and had a population of almost 3 million in 2531, for a growth rate of 6% over 98 years. Alluvian, settled in 2412, had a population of over 336 million, for a growth rate of 8% over 130 years. Population growth definitely boomed during and following the Damas Diaspora, a sort of second baby boom. While some of this rapid growth could reasonably be explained by continuous immigration to the colonies after they were established, there's no doubt that it's largely just a natural population boom. So, back to our population calculations. By 2390, 210 colonies had been settled, establishing the inner colonies, the central hub of the human sphere. We can estimate those 210 colonies were established by 210 colony ships, each carrying 11,000 colonists apiece, making for 2.31 million colonists. Now going with a 5% growth rate similar to Reach, we'd be looking at a population increase of 9 million among these colonies in that period. In the Sol system, we'll keep our 0.5% growth rate, bringing the population up to 13.9 billion plus change, making the human population in 2390 around 14 billion. Over the next 100 years, more than 600 colonies of varying sizes and populations would be founded. Let's estimate that about half of those are colonies with large populations numbering in the millions, each having started with a population of 11,000 or so. If we apply an average growth rate of 7% based on the average of the growth rates previously listed, we arrive at a population for the outer colonies being around 30.5 billion. As far as the inner colonies, the 210 previously mentioned plus Seoul, We'll again keep our lower estimate at 0.5%, representing population growth leveling out, as we arrive at a population of 27.5 billion, 
which puts the total human population in 2525 to be around 58 billion spread across the Orion Arm. Or at least, my amateur and somewhat arbitrary methods put it there. As previously stated, we know that human population doesn't exceed into the trillions, based on various references in Halo Media, and when Dr. Halsey was screening for her Spartan 2 candidates, she notes the need to screen 39 billion DNA samples. The way she says this, and her reference to the Colonial Vaccination Program's DNA records being her best bet, indicates to me that the 39 billion DNA samples aren't in those records. While some of that can be accounted for, considering that not every colonist is going to be taking advantage of the vaccination program, that should still indicate the low tens of billions population for the outer colonies, which fits our 30.5 billion estimate. So yeah, I think we'd be looking at around 58 billion humans pre-Covenant War, which I'll be the first to admit I think is a bit of a high estimate, especially with low ball losses of 26 billion. Osman's a few billion losses comment can easily have various meanings. So let's up the losses at Earth, or rather the losses in the Sol system, to 5 billion, putting human casualties at 28 billion. That would leave around 30 billion people left immediately after the war. Again, I still think 58 billion is probably a highball estimate, as with 28 billion losses, 30 billion left kind of takes away the devastating impact of the Human Covenant War. Don't get me wrong, 28 billion is a lot of deaths. But the implication in the lore has always been that humanity was on its last leg when Reach and Earth were discovered by the Covenant. Traditional estimates have put human survivors after the end of the war at 16 billion, which, while still a lot, is certainly more devastating. But until 343 decides to make numbers official, 28 billion losses is where we stand. Before we wrap up, it's worth noting that worlds would continue to be attacked by the Covenant, such as the case with Slayel in 2556 which would result in more casualties, though likely nothing nearly as decimating as during the war itself. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember to head over to Halo Cannon and check out the Covenant casualties that Installation 00 worked out. It's fascinating how he did all that. If you like his normal content, you'll find this equally fascinating. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks, man. That was genuinely a pleasure to watch and behold. It's really tough to get your head around just how many losses that really is. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I hope we can team up again in the near future, and thank you everyone for joining us today and watching. If you want to see the other side of the casualties, head on over to Halo Cannon and watch my attempt at figuring out the Covenant casualties in a very roundabout way of doing it. Link is in the description. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Halo Cannon while you're over there. I've been a Cannonite for much, much longer than I've been Mr. Zero Zero, as Halo Cannon so eloquently put it. He makes some of the best Halo content on YouTube and knows his lore. I want to say another thanks to Halo Cannon for this collab and to the Installation 00 Patreons, Nathan the Silent Cartographer, Miguel, Brian and Sebastian the Holders of the Mantle, Justin, Darian, Ty and Iron Griffin my Reclaimers, Zack, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesigo and Charles my Metarchs and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. I literally cannot put it into words how much it all means to me. If you like Halo or discussed it in insane levels of detail, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord. And if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more time for me to put into this Halo content and other Halo related goodness, including more collabs with awesome content creators. For now, I'm signing off. Thanks again for watching, take care everyone, and find peace in the domain.